Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1, Text 6, Translation and Commentary by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Etavan Sankhya Yogabhyam Svadharma Parinishtaya Janma Labhaha Paraha Pumsam Ante Narayana Smritihi Etavan Sankhya Yogabhyam Svadharma Parinishtaya Janmalabha para pung sam ante narayana smriti etavan sankhya yoga bhyam svadharma parinishtaya janmalabha para pung sam Ante Narayana Smriti Ladies chant and senior ladies first, please. Then the men, the juniors all jumped in. There are many seniors here. The opportunity should be given to them first. So any senior ladies first, please like to chant. All right, then any junior or madhyasta or whatever. Etavan, all these, Sankhya, complete knowledge of matter and spirit, Yoga Bhyam, knowledge of mystic power, Svadharma, particular occupational duty, Parinishtaya, 
by full perception. Janma, birth, labhaha, gain, paraha, the supreme, pungsam, of a person, ante, at the end, narayana, the personality of Godhead, smritihi, remembrance. The highest perfection of human life achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers or by perfect discharge of occupational duty is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of life. Purport. Narayana is the transcendental personality of Godhead beyond the material creation. Everything that is created, sustained, and at the end annihilated is within the compass of the Mahat Tattva, material principle, and is known as the material world. The existence of Narayana, or the Personality of Godhead, is not within the ju jurisdiction of this Mahat Tattva, and as such, the name, form, attributes, etc. of Narayana are beyond the jurisdiction of the material world. By the speculation of empiric philosophy which discerns matter from spirit, or by cultivation of mystic powers which ultimately helps the, helps the performer to reach any planet of the universe or beyond the universe, or by discharge of religious duties, one can achieve the highest perfection, provided one is able to reach the stage of Narayana Smriti, or constant remembrance of the Personality of Godhead. This is possible only by the association of a pure devotee who can give a finishing touch to the transcendental activities of all jnanis, yogis or karmis in terms of prescribed duties defined in the scriptures. There are many historical instances of the achievement of spiritual perfection such as that of the Sanakadi Rishis or the nine celebrated Yogendras who attain perfection only after being situated in the devotional service of the Lord. None of the devotees of the Lord ever deviated from the path of devotional service by taking to other methods as adopted by the Jnanis or Yogis. Everyone is anxious to achieve the highest perfection of his particular activity and it is indicated herein that such perfection is Narayana Smriti, for which everyone must endeavor his best. In other words, life should be molded in such a manner that one is able to progressively remember the personality of Godhead at every life, at, at every stage, every step of life. Etavan Sankhya Yoga Bhyam Swadharma Parinishthaya Janmala Bhav Paraf Pungsam Ante Narayana Smriti Hi the highest perfection of human life achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers, or by perfect discharge of occupational duty is to remember is to remember the personal is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of life. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai. Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Anum Api Shachiputram Atras Rupam Rupam Tas Yaga Jamurupuring Maturing Goshtavati Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasha Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tanatos Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavanscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tanditam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Tetanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Visha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Srimad Bhagavatam is Krishna speaking to whoever is prepared to hear it and speaks personally to every one of us. This message is for every one of us individually that we should be preparing to go back to Godhead. Consider, I have been forced to undergo repeated birth and death. 8,400,000 species of life. We can hardly imagine what it's like to be in the body of a lizard or a worm or an indra. How many times have we been in, or I have been in lizard bodies, worm bodies, indra bodies, human bodies, all over the universe, suffering in illusion, disease, fear. The worm fears the sparrow, the sparrow fears the eagle, the eagle fears the hunter's bullet. Everyone is fearful. Birth after birth after birth. We get a human body and then we roll on again. When we get in the human body, we, we make more and more reactions which force us to go again through a whole cycle due to my ignorance, my, my faults, my, my sinful attitude, uh, sinful activities and sinful activities, sinful attitude of not wanting to serve Krishna. And uh, that becomes even more compounded by offenses, to Krishna and his devotees. We're in a very t deeply dark situation. Nice day today, isn't it? Nice day today. Nice, what's, what's nice? <laughs> that is an illusion. Nice day. Every day is not a nice day. Today is my birthday. Someone says, uh, today is your death day. Every day, we're just one day closer to our next death. How long will it go on? But despite all this dark, gloomy picture, we are hopeful. We are hopeful now because we have the opportunity to hear this message. Janmala para pung sam. We hear the message that we have to remember Narayana, Krishna at the time of death. And of course, behind this is a whole great understanding that I am eternal living being, part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. Uh, I, I undergo death, but I don't die. My relation with Krishna is always dormant. It can always be revived at any time. And now, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, I'm on the path back to Godhead. That, that hope is there. My, my real purpose in life, my real purpose in life is not just like Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport. Everyone is trying to uh, succeed or be the best in their particular line of activity. So someone's trying to be the best baseball player, someone's trying to be the best businessman, someone's trying to be the best politician. Now we understand our true purpose in life is simply to serve Krishna. A haitukiya pratihata without any personal motive and always in all circumstances. So now we've got this hope and we are assured that once we take to this path, we will continue. Still, we should prepare. We, we should continue until we reach that goal of uh, reviving pure love for Krishna, going back to Godhead. But still, we shouldn't just think, okay, well, I'm okay. I'm, now I'm on the right path and by Krishna's mercy, I must be going back to Godhead because thinking like that puts us back 
Mrityu Sangsara Vartmane, Shadadhana Purusha, Dharma Syasya Parantapa, Prapya Mangde Vartante, Mrityu Sangsara Vartmane. If we take Krishna's mercy for granted and we don't apply ourselves to the process with full seriousness, then we're in great danger of being overcome by material consciousness. And again, going back in the cycle of birth and death. But we will we will go back to God assuredly. But if we actually have any feeling for Krishna, then why should we delay it? Why why should we want to check out the heavenly planets for the umpteenth time? We've already been there, but we under the great illusion we think it should be very nice there. Let us consider our great fortune. We are so fortunate to be gathered here today having got the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, which means the mercy of all the great acharyas, means the mercy of Krishna. Uh, those of us who are by body-wise older, we can see how Krishna's mercy, Srila Prabhupada's mercy, has been accompanying us throughout our life as we stumble along uh, we we have an idea of where we're going but we're not very uh not very capable of going jayato jayatam surato pangor mamamanda matergati i'm i'm just like crippled very hard for me to progress but mat sarvasva padam bhujo radha madhava mohano but i have great uh solace in the fact that my my uh, ultimate goal, that my real goal of life is the lotus feet of Radha, Madan, Mohan. And I, I can see the mercy in my life as I have so many material attachments that they're, they're very kindly. Therefore, we pray first of all to Radha, Madan, Mohan. Radha, Madan, Mohan, Radha, Govinda, Radha, Gopinath to take away all the dirty things in our heart, we can see that their, their, their mercy is not something we read about in a book or even something that we feel, but we can perceive it, how they act in a way to help us despite our unwillingness. Where we, have some will we, we do have some willingness, otherwise we wouldn't stay on this path, but we've got a lot of unwillingness also. So the Supreme Lord in our hearts really helps us. We can see that, how he's helping us along the path uh, by arranging certain circumstances, arranging for association of devotees, devotees to help us, guide us. Uh, we can see Srila Prabhupada in our lives uh, again and again and again, we can experience daily, we can experience, uh, never mind our consciousness is 99% covered, but we can experience the holy name as we chant the holy name, that, one per that, that little bit of mercy of the holy name which we allow to get through our covered consciousness is so powerful that we can feel the soothing rays of the benediction moon and come back again and again and again to bathe in that uh, moonlight of the mercy of the holy name. So that is our great good fortune. Uh, but my great misfortune is despite all of this, I'm still hanging on to all those useless, just stupid Material, just stupid, that's all. What else is there to say? Stupid material attachments. And I, I, I'm supposed to learn from Srimad Bhagavatam, but I don't learn, a very slow learner, and still uh, stubborn, puffed up, ignorant, foolish, refusing to surrender to Krishna, uh, sitting on a big seat, but I'm neophyte or less than neophyte but still 
despite the fact that my spiritual progress is so slow, I can see the hand of Krishna. And Krishna really is Suhridam Sarvabhutanam. He is the best friend of every living being. So is he not also my best friend? Is he not my best friend that he sent Srila Prabhupada into our lives? Uh, and Srila Prabhupada being the very form, Krishna Kripa Srimurti, his divine grace, the very form of Krishna's mercy. Uh, is he not still watching over us, pulling us, trying to pull us up? Uh, Srila Prabhupada himself, it's inconceivable how pure devotees think like this, but he, he, he wrote in 1936 that I cannot, I cannot hope for full liberation or going back to Godhead, even in many, many crores of lives, millions and millions of lives. That may be, but, uh, in, but our future is assured if we just keep faith that despite all my disqualifications. It may, may, may take many, 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 who knows how many lifetimes. Srila Prabhupada wants to take us back to Godhead and he will, despite our causeless stubbornness and foolishness. But he has told us again and again and again, we should prepare ourselves to go back to Godhead in this very lifetime. Uh, it's really up to us. Otherwise, what happens if we think that, well, yeah, maybe I'll put it off to the next lifetime. And that, we must have done that in the last lifetime. To have the opportunity to be engaged in the association of devotees means we had to come here because we didn't make it back to Godhead in the last lifetime because we thought, I'll do it next lifetime. And if in this lifetime, we think, I'll do it in the next lifetime. Then we get another birth. And in that life, we think, I'll do it in the next life. And it just goes on and on like that. So at some point, we've got to say, Krishna, you are the ocean of bliss. You are the ocean of nectar. Let me, but, but we can't experience that nectar. The, he's the ocean of nectar. But it's just like to swim, you have to get in the water. You can't just watch a YouTube video and read a book and learn how to swim. It's not enough even to just put your toe in the water. You have to dive in, full immersion. Nectar of devotion, Srila Prabhupada writes, only persons who have dedicated their lives unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, can relish the real nectar of devotion. So that's the nectar of devotion, the nectar for which we are all, always anxious. We, only persons who have dedicated their lives unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can relish the real nectar of devotion. So whatever little nectar I might be relishing at this stage it's only a it's only a beginning taste the nectar for which we are always anxious chito darpana marjanam bhava mahadavagni nirvapanam shreya kairava chandrika vitaranam vidyavadhu jivanam anandam buddhi vardhanam purnam anandam buddhi vardhanam Pratipadam Purnam Ritasvadanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam Glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. This Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious, or at least we should be fully anxious. Hmm. The nectar of Krishna. Nectar of Krishna. This uh, 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur in one song has described about Krishna Amrita, the nectar of Krishna. He's uh, in this song, he's explaining about what it means to be a real sannyasi. So he sings, Ama bachan dharo antar bishuddha karo Krishna amrita shada karo paan Jibon shahaje jai bhakti badha nahi pai Tadu pai karo ha shandam Ama bachan dharo is translated here. Now please try to understand my advice on how to be a true sannyasi, internal, complete cleanliness, and always drinking the nectar of Krishnamrita, the nectar of Krishna consciousness. Find out that way in which in this life we can live our lives in a manner that as far as possible we can Go on with our spiritual life without, in other words, don't invite obstacles. Just try to live our life in as clear a way and as pure a way as possible that it is favorable for our execution of devotional service. Understanding that, yeah, in this world we have so many interactions, so many responsibilities, so many things to do. The real person who is the source of all nectar, who is who we are all connected to, but now we're disconnected. We hear again and again and again, Srila Prabhupada used that term, the supreme personality of Godhead. He wanted to emphasize that. He, he wanted to emphasize it again and again. He's a real person. Krishna is a real person. He's not a concept. Or an idea. God is a concept by which we measure our pain, said someone who died in died in pain, lived lived his life in pain and died with being shot. But no, he's a real person. He's not a concept. He's he's where is Krishna? He's here right now. As much as we want him to be. He is here and he will reveal us as himself to us as much as we want him to. He's watching us. When we pray with sincerity, he hears, he reciprocates. We cook for offering to him. He tastes it. When we serve him, especially when we serve with a pure heart, thinking of Krishna. I, Krishna, please, please be pleased with this. And then he reciprocates and we can experience that. So imagine, can we even begin to imagine where pure devotees, the, the platform that they're situated on when even in a very neophyte stage we can feel the reciprocation of Krishna. We can experience the mercy of Krishna. But those pure devotees, what, what, is the, what are they experiencing at every moment in relation to Krishna? Uh, what I, I, I felt, and I'm sure, I, well, I'm not sure, but I probably my god siblings who are here can uh, agree with that, that when we were, when Srila Prabhupada was personally present among us, among his disciples, there were, there were seniors, and we looked up to them, and juniors, but Prabhupada was just like, just way, way, way above everyone, right? We looked up to the seniors as being much more advanced than us, but we looked up to Srila Prabhupada as just, just unimaginable how he's, the level of Krishna consciousness that he's on, it is, he's, he, Seems to be an ordinary person, moves in, in some ways, moves in this world, talks, walks, sees, hears, smells, tastes. But Srila Prabhupada's presence was electric, it was spiritually uh, surcharged. He was 
so many people had that experience. And even now, they take the books, they read the books, they associate with Prabhupada, how he's fully situated in transcendence, fully, fully situated in Krishna consciousness. He's fully conscious of Krishna with love. He's actually Krishna conscious. He's sane. Everyone in this material world is insane. Uh, they may appear to be sane. What is the standard of sanity? The standard of sanity is to conduct our life in an ordered way, forgetting Krishna. But that's insane because our human life is meant for cultivating consciousness of Krishna. We hear descriptions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu running wildly, of great pure devotees this morning. I mentioned about Namarva, who just thinking of Krishna being tied up by your shoulder, fainted and came back to consciousness after six months. We have Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj, when devotees were trying to serve him, he ran away, jumped in the Jalangi River and came up after a month's time. So we we can't imagine it's they might appear to be crazy if if we give a description of Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj Vangshi Das Babaji Maharaj seem to be completely insane. Once I I gave this book which I had had uh, compiled about Vangshi Das Babaji Maharaj with a picture of him on the front cover, and he's squatting down almost naked with beard and un un and a look like almost like crazy look in his eyes. I gave this to a, at the time, young, not young now, a successful Indian businessman. And he looked at him and said, I sort of say, what are you giving that to me for? You know, what have I got to do with that? He said, well, why do you give me this boy? I said, he's a great devotee of Krishna. Well, what did he do? What did he do? Well, he, he didn't do anything. He, he walked from his hometown, home village, Majidpur, to Navadweep. He stayed there for some time. And then he, after some time, he walked to Puri and then uh, and took train to Vrindavan. And he came back and then went to Navadweep. And then at the end of his life, he walked back to his home village and he passed away there. That's not, that's not like reading the life of Steve Jobs or Nelson Mandela. Someone must have written a biography of Steve Jobs right now. There must be several. So, anyway, it doesn't matter. So that's, that's an inspiring life. How you start off in a garage fiddling around as a kid with computers or whatever, and then you, you make the household world, word, Apple, Microsoft. That, and here you have Bhangshi does. What did he do? I replied, he loved Krishna. There's a look of, on the businessman's face of incomprehension mixed with skepticism. What on earth do you want to do that for? That was, I've got money, I've got a good business. Well, you're giving the you're giving this. Are you suggesting that I should be like that? Would be a very good idea for you, and for anyone. But we can't imitate. Radharani in Vrindavan embraces the tamal tree, thinking it's Krishna. We don't imitate, but we hear about it, and we follow in the footsteps. We're supposed to follow in the footsteps. We're not supposed to erect hurdles at every step. Already there are so many hurdles. Uh, we shouldn't resist. The, the, there's a tsunami of nectar to over flood us. So all we have to do is take our finger out of the dike. You know that story? The, the dike keeps this flood back and the boy puts his finger in or puts his body in or what. Whatever. So we shouldn't let let the nectar flow. Uh, have faith. We we should have faith because 
We have all tasted the nectar of devotion to some extent, and we hear the descriptions of, uh, of the great devotees. And we, one major factor that I understand why Srila Prabhupada was able to preach Krishna consciousness in the West is because he came to the West. And that might sound like a truism or something, but if he'd have just sent his books, who would have believed it? That anyone could live like that. Anyone can be like that. It, it might, even Bhakti Stansasrai Thakur, he, he, he said at one point, he wrote that, I, I read about all these things about the great devotees and how they're living a life completely detached from this world, completely absorbed in Krishna. But I thought, is that possible now in the modern world? Can anyone be like that? And then he saw Gorky Shortas Babaji Maharaj. And then he wanted, he wanted to be like that, and he was like that. And eventually uh, he was pulled by the, by, well, or pushed by the order of his Guru Maharaj that you have to preach Krishna consciousness. You have to preach the message of Krishna consciousness. So that life. Why, why would you want to be like Vangshi does Babaji Maharaj, Gorki Shah does Babaji Maharaj, just uh, Sakshad Vairagya Murti? Who wants to be like that, completely detached from this world? Well, Srila Prabhupada didn't say we have to do that, but the point is that as long as we're attached to anything of this world, then we don't get the full nectar of the spiritual world. We, we can go up. It's up to us. We can, we can go to the spirit. Well, no one's holding us back. We may think someone's holding us back, but it's only our, it's only our stubbornness that's holding us back. And Srila Prabhupada, he, he told us so many times, you've been here so many lifetimes we've given to, uh, to Maya. When I was in the body of a frog, I had a beautiful wife. <laughs> The most beautiful frog you could ever, Mrs. Frog, you could ever imagine. Lots of little tadpoles, and it was really good. And when I was a chimpanzee, I had jumping around, life was great. Oh, really? I'm going to be that again? I'm going to go, I really got to jump around as a chimpanzee again? <laughs> What is one life to sacrifice? We've given so many lives to Mrs. Chimpanzee and so many lifetimes to Mrs. Donkey. Or when I was Mrs. Donkey, I gave my, I gave my all my love to my, my wonderful husband who sings so nicely. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Oh. Just give, Srila Prabhupada said, just give this one life to Krishna. What is it? One life. So, even if we take it as an experiment, what is there to lose? Uh, there will always be another Mrs. Chimpanzee somewhere up the line. So, <laughs> if that's what we really want, Maya will provide. But we shouldn't be so foolish. What have we got, what have we got to sacrifice? I gave up everything. Oh, in your movement, you ask people to give up everything. Give up what? Give up what? Uh, the good life. Uh, what good life? It's all nonsense. Uh, Srila Prabhupada came, ambassador from the spiritual world. All he asked us to do was chant Hare Krishna, follow the rules, and go to just follow this life. And we may say that, well, he asked us to surrender. You have to surrender to the guru. You may think he's so demanding, but, but look what he's giving us. He gave us more than we can imagine. More than, more than, one reason when we, we don't experience our full nectar, we're just not ready, we're just not capable. It's, it's just so much, so much nectar. Uh, we have to prepare ourselves for that. So we're getting, we, we may think, well, I'm, I'm giving my life to Krishna, but what is, what are we giving up? What are we giving? We're giving up all our, 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 our suffering, our repeated birth and death. And what are we getting back? 
We're getting Krishna Amrita, the nectar of Krishna. I mean, even on the material plane, uh, devotees aren't doing too bad. Uh, at least best food. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to party tonight, right? Music festival. People go to a music festival. We have a music festival three times a day, every day. The people, they, they work hard and some nasty Ugra karma all week just so that they can get drunk and go out and dance on Saturday night. And we don't even get drunk, but we, every mo we're so, we have such a nice life that we get up early every morning. We don't even want to sleep all day. And we get up early and we're dancing every morning. And no hangover. <laughs> and we, we got association. We, we, the best people in the world are devotees. And doing server. I wanted my so the mother comes. I, I wanted you to be in the university and be a PhD and you're cleaning the toilet here. <laughs> yeah. I'm cleaning the toilet. I'm cleaning the toilet of the which the devotees use. It's great. Otherwise I have to waste my life being a PhD. This is the perfect life. Following, not trying, not trying to be, I am a great success, but simply following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas, wanting to become this. Why? Why are you cleaning the toilet? Well, they, they wouldn't give me any more menial service to do, so I have to settle for this. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm trying to do my best, but they, they don't trust me to do any more menial service, so... I'm just doing this. So, we we have the opportunity. Sadhu Gamanam. So many have followed this path. Vita Raga Bhayakroda Manmaya Mamupashritaha Bhavo Gyanatapasa Puta Madbhava Magataha. Krishna promises that you can do it. Many in the past have done it. You've got well, I've got all these hang ups in my mind and lust and anger and greed and attachments but Krishna says you can do it many in the past have also done it they've become freed from all the attachments and fears and frustrations and anger and they've gone on they've followed the process they've become purified they've come to me you can do it we can get to the point where we're fully absorbed in Krishna moment after moment, serving the Vaishnavas. And when, when we chant, you see, Srila Prabhupada is chanting, if we think 1966 storefront, Srila Prabhupada is chanting, and the hippies and whoever come, they're also chanting. When Prabhupada's chanting, he's experiencing Krishna directly. And the hippies, through their fog of intoxication they're experiencing something they don't know what it is it's also Krishna but Prabhupada's level of realization and our level of realization there's there's a big gap Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur once speaking to his disciples say, said uh, Ami Bolchi I'm speaking and you're hearing, but there's a gap between us. But close the gap. The whole aim of the Acharyas, they come to this world to close the gap so that Tobe to Gaibo Harinama Shuke Aparada Hobe Hoto that we'll come to the stage of actually chanting the holy names, free from all offenses, free from all attachments. That's we, we have come to this process so we can actually come to that stage That's so where there's no offense, no envy in our heart, no attachment in our heart. We can actually love Krishna. And he, he, he gives us so many 
opportunities to surrender to him and to serve him and uh, whatever opportunity we get we should grab it because life is short uh, don't we shouldn't come to the ante at the last stage of life ante narayana smriti he we shouldn't come to the end of life thinking oh i blew it again i had so many opportunities to surrender now it's too late ah uh, now it's bardake ekon pancharoge hato kemane bhajibo bolo bhakti no tako is lamenting in his transcendental ecstasy of thinking himself a fallen soul now in old age i'm beset by five different types of disease how can i worship how can i perform krishna consciousness in this state so now we have that opportunity now of course we're talking about being a pure devotee but at the same time you have to it's a gradual process we should run to krishna throw ourselves to krishna atmanik shepa in the six six uh, angas six limbs of surrender atmanik shepa it's uh, it literally means throwing ourselves at krishna but at the same time we have to apply ourselves to the process not be a a shooting star that we big big show and then phew, gone but if we can apply ourselves day after day day after day day after day in krishna consciousness many drops weareth away the stone it's saying in english it's probably a similar thing in most languages so keep on going keep on going keep on going keep on going keep on praying but keep on calling out for the mercy of krishna with the knowledge or the, the that it, it it may take who knows how many lifetimes but i what else have i got to do what else have i got to do There's, even if i feel my advancement is very slow what else do i have to do? there's nothing to do in the material world there's uh, it's uh, leave that behind that's done finished enough grihastha devotees also can think like this i'm doing my duty here but this lifetime that's enough this lifetime i should do whatever i have to do to go back to godhead now i'm in this situation i should perform my devotional service in this situation without neglecting the responsibilities of grihastha life but really our vision has to be fixed ong tat vishnu paramang padang sada paschanti surya always fix our vision on the lotus feet of the supreme lord in the spiritual world and even if we do have to take birth after birth uh we can pray we pray every day chakudana diloje janme janme prabhu she even if i have to take so many births uh still uh, propad is with us uh uh that i quoted this morning from bhaktivino tako paraphrasing the uh, mama janmani janmani shri bhavatad bhakti ra haitu ki to i paraphrasing this chaitanya mahaprabhu's prayer that uh not praying for liberation but uh that in every life i can serve you krishna unmotivatedly so he prays that what is that pati janma nijja karma guna doshe jay jay janma pai janme janme jena tava nama guna gai he's praying to krishna that Uh, i i'm in this world i'm performing activities i may have to take birth again and again according to my good activities and bad activities but my only prayer is that in every birth i get the opportunity to glorify your name fame qualities pastimes and so on so ante narayana smriti hi we should remember krishna at the time of death that is our aim but 
at the same time, our attitude should be not to demand that I, I chanted Hare Krishna all my life, now I must go back to Godhead, but we should be prepared. Thy will, not mine, be done, prayed Lord Jesus Christ. If, if Krishna wants to send us back, Kita janma hao jata tua das, bahimokka brahma janme nahimor ash. That if, if Krishna, if you desire that I come to this material world, it's up to you. If you want me to be born as a bug or an insect, that's up to you. But if I'm going to be a bug or an insect, at least give me association of devotees. That's my prayer. And to get the biggest position in the material world of Brahma, I don't want if I'm, inim if I'm inimical to you. That is the prayer of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So that's unalloyed devotional service. That our aim, ante narayan janmala paraphpung sang, ante narayana smriti. All our life should be centered on this uh, bhajankara, shadankara, marti janlehoi. Everything we've done, our service, our chanting, all that will be seen at the time of death. That's the vital moment when everything is tested. But devotees uh, the, who are fully imbibe the spirit of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he comes to teach. And actually we find also in the writings of previous Acharyas, even in Bhagavatam in the uh, Ritra Sura, his prayers that uh, even if I may have to take so many births, let it be in the association of devotees. And that is pure devotional service. Reading from Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 2, text 72, there is no difference between the kingdom of God and the devotional service of the Lord. Since both of them are on the absolute plane, to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord is to have attained the spiritual kingdom. So those who are engaged fully in Krishna consciousness, they're already on the transcendental platform. They're already uh, on the, already on this spiritual kingdom. And it's it's not that we we might think that, well, yeah, I'll just go on in a in a halfway Krishna consciousness and then die and then go back to Godhead. But it, the, one has to be prepared for that. It's not that you you suddenly flip from one kind of consciousness to another. But what if one is in Vaikuntha consciousness now, then as Srila Prabhupada said in one lecture, for a devotee, dying means it's like he goes to sleep and he wakes up and he's in Galoka Vrindavan. Because his consciousness is already there. So it's just a matter of transference of place. But if our consciousness isn't there, even if we woke up in Galoka Vrindavan and say, oh, this is strange, it doesn't seem right to me. It's too much surrender. I better, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless we're fully prepared for that, we won't be able to go. Here, here's something pertinent to that. Often we're, we're asked, is it all right to eat chocolate? And I think, well, I never heard of Krishna eating chocolate. So if we become attached to that, we might not want to go back to Godhead. Because there's no chocolate here, I'm not going. It's a material attachment. We offer... But I offered it to Krishna, it's Prasad. Yeah, you offered it to Krishna because you wanted to eat it, right? Well, at least you offered it to Krishna. But we have to think what Krishna wants. That is Vaikuntha consciousness. B burning up all material desire. And again, on the chocolate issue, if you're not sure, then don't eat it. If you're not sure whether it's okay to eat it or not, then don't because it's not. there's no rule that thou must eat chocolate. Uh, and you don't die without it and you can go back to Godhead without it uh, so if you're not sure then don't do it that's all how are we going to get to the point of being without chocolate just don't take it that's all
That's all. How can... One, uh, some years ago, a devotee asked me, how, how do you do it? How do you get up every morning? Early in the morning, I said, well, what do I do? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I see it's like 3.30, 3.20, whatever. I get up. That's how I do it. It's easy. How do you get up? I get up. <laughs> if you want, I'll give a demonstration. You lie down and then you get up. <laughs> how do you do it? It's just, you don't think of doing anything else. That's all. It's just, just do it. That's all. Why would you want to do anything else? Oh, the commies, they sleep till 8 o'clock. You want to be a commie? Okay. There are plenty of them. But you're not meant for that. We've got, we've got a better life. We've got better knowledge. How do, we, how do we get to the stage of full surrender to Krishna? There should come a point in every devotee's life when... Actually, it should come at the beginning, but it can happen. We start with enthusiasm, and then after some time, we feel we're getting in a, in a rut or something, and then introspection is required and see that we have superficial motives. We're just not giving ourselves as fully as we should be. Uh, and from time to time, we should check ourselves. Even daily we can do it. Are we committed? Are we serious? Are we surrendered? Uh, what's going on in my thoughts? Am I allowing duplicitous motives, envy, uh, hatred, stupidity, do I allow then I, time to work on ourselves. Uh, and the best thing to do is just give up all the nonsense right away. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be a, a protracted process. Srila Prabhupada said that you can become Krishna conscious in a moment just by desiring to. At the same time, we know that for most of us it's going to be a gradual process, but let's not make it too gradual. It's already, it's already gradual enough. Uh, don't hang on. And we know we know the story of the stones, right? The stone, the piece people are attached to their stones that came in an early edition of Back to Godhead. That was part, that was written by Hanuman Prasad Pulda. Prabhupada had he was the founder of Gita Press, which is very well known in India. So he gave that story that there are two sides of a river, and on one side of the river, people are living very happily. On the other side of the river, people are weighed down by so many. They're carrying big sacks of rocks on their back. And it's miserable. But whoever carries more rocks is considered the most prestigious. And they're attached to that prestige. And time to time, some of them might wander to the, to the edge of the river and see people on the other side who are calling, why don't you come cross the river? No, it's, 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 it's quite a strong current. Yeah, but you can cry. You just give up those stones and you, you can cross over easily. Give up my stones? I've been collecting these stones all my life. How can I give them up? And my, my father and mother gave me these stones and it's my duty to carry them. <sighs> Telling me to give up my stones, huh? Go back, uh, carry them. The stones are our material attachments. You throw them out, we can easily cross over and go to the spiritual world. But we're attached, foolishly attached. If you want to serve Krishna fully, we have to be fully pure. Give up our stones, give up our material attachments. Even if we think that my life is not my life, Okay, I'm going slowly, but I should try to do something to serve the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I'm going so slowly 
but at least I have this knowledge. That is my good fortune. So let me try to share that with others or serve in the Sankirtan movement. I do whatever I can to, because I'm in illusion, but I'm not in as bad a situation as everyone else around me. By the grace of Srila Prabhupada, I'm in a situation where I do know what is right and what is wrong, and even though I'm going slowly, I'm on the right path. But look at everyone else. They're, suf they're suffering so much from lack of knowledge of Krishna. So let, let me try to do something that will please Srila Prabhupada, that will please Krishna if I try to do something to help others to come to Krishna Conscious. And you never know. They, you may give a book to someone and they take up fully devotional service and they go way ahead of you and then they pick you up. Just like Dhruva Maharaj picked up Suniti. So it's a good policy. If we, we try to help others by giving them Krishna Consciousness, then Krishna will be pleased. We feel the reciprocation of Krishna when we try to do that. If we may be so so many material attachments, this, that, and the other. We can remember the advice that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to the Kurma Brahmana, who was just living his life as a pious Brahmana in South India. Then one day, unexpectedly, unannounced, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced into his village. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just with his one companion, wandering in South India, and Kurma Brahmana invited him to his home, uh, washed his feet, sprinkled that water on his head and the heads of all his family members. But the next day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is ready to go, and the, the Kurma said to him, I want to go with you. Now that you have come, I don't want to remain amid all these material attachments and all this sense gratification. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, you stay here. Don't, don't speak like that. You just stay here. And jare deko tare koha krishna upadesh amaragyai guru haya taro edesh. You stay in this place, practice Krishna consciousness, tell others about the message of Krishna. And if you do that, then kobu na badi beitomai e bishoi taranga punarapi Eitai pabe marashanga. If you do this, then the waves of sense gratification, the waves of material life, won't be an obstruction to you. If you try to give to others what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given to us, then this is the method, easy method, the mercy method to overcome all those obstacles. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you don't have to go with, with me. You'll meet me right here. I will be with you, in other words. So that should be our prayer. Not that we neglect. Okay, I'll just go and just read books. I won't bother chanting my rounds. Not like that. Uh, we have to take strength from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by chanting the holy names. And we're preaching to others to come to Krishna consciousness. It's not that we just, okay, we're just preaching, but we... We also have to develop Krishna consciousness ourselves uh, by aspiring to chant the holy names in full purity, to serve Krishna in all purity. So, ante narayana smritihi. We have to prepare ourselves for that, for uh, remembering Krishna at the time of death. But it's not something that we have to think of when we're just almost dead. Uh, we should start Komara Acharat Pragya. Start as soon as possible. Start it in childhood. Don't waste time. Every moment is precious. <coughs> what is it? Ayusha Kshana Ekopi Nalabya Swarna Koti Bihi. Even one moment that goes away, even if we bring all the gold in the world, we can't buy it back. So therefore, we should practice being Krishna conscious. And these Shravan Kirtan camps are supposed to be uh, inspiration so that we can 
always be in Krishna consciousness. We feel inspiration in the association of devotees hearing and chanting. We should take that to wherever we are, take that inspiration, maintain that spirit. And if you think, well, there are not so many devotees, then you go out and preach and make, then they'll come. And then there'll be more. So this is our motto. Ante Narayana Smritihi. Prepare and live our lives in such a way that we can remember Krishna at the time of death. To do that, we have to practice right here and now. Smartavya Satatang Vishnuho. Always thinking of Krishna. And the process is very easy and very relishable. Chanting the holy names of Krishna and discussing topics of Krishna from Srila Prabhupada's books and taking Krishna Prasada, which is now time for taking Krishna Prasada and then going out among all the people miserably trying to enjoy themselves and giving them the real nectar for which they're always anxious. The holy name of Krishna. So that will be this afternoon. Hare Krishna. Does anyone have any question or comment, please? Another lifetime book distributor. Yeah. Take her blessings. Kamalini Mataji. So, um, this instruction here to always remember Krishna, especially at the time of death, um, you know, it could be kind of ambiguous. Like, how to remember Krishna. Just remember his name, just remember his form, his pastime, and um, and also sometimes we hear that chanting japa, you should just hear the holy name and not remember Krishna. <laughs> not remember Don't his. remember, chant the holy name and whatever you do, don't remember Krishna. <laughs> We've all heard it in yeah, classes. Yes, Srila Prabhupada said, where is the question of the mind? Just hear. Mm -hmm. That's beginning stage. If, if the mind, just forget the mind, just hear. But then uh, it's nice to chant. Tulsi, Tulasi Krishna, Prayasi. She's Krishna Pradayani, Krishna Bhakti Pradayani. She gives Bhakti. Uh, we can chant in front of a picture of Krishna. It's not that I'm chanting and whatever I'm doing, I'm not going to remember Krishna. <laughs> but to artificially try to remember the pastimes of Krishna, that shouldn't be there. It should be, first of all, hearing, because that's how we interact with this Krishna in the form of sound. That's The hearing should be there. Hearing, and then gradually, as one becomes purified, then, and we're hearing Bhagavatam, we're hearing the pastimes, then, then all these things will come. It's not that it's banned to think of Krishna. We can have, it. by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, there's so many pictures, windows to the spiritual world, paintings of the spiritual world. It's they're very inspiring, those paintings. So you see, you, you brought that from Alachua, so of Gornitai, and you just see that picture and you just. I want to be there. <laughs> I don't want to be here. I want to be there. It's inspiring. What is that? A shikadi, a shabnadi, a firche neche gornitai. We're just seeing that. Gornitai is telling everyone to chant the holy names of Radha and Krishna. So they are giving this instruction, Eshikadiya, Shabnadiya, they're going all around Nadia, chanting and telling everyone to chant the holy names. So it's an invitation. Invita join Lord Chaitanya's eternal Sankirtan party. Want to go? Okay, take me with you. Ah, time up.
Prasadam was not ready. I'll make it quick. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. If they tell you in India two minutes, you know it's going to be at least half an hour. So. <laughs> Timeless. We, devotees live in the world of timelessness. You said the mercy of Krishna is by taking shelter of his lotus feet. So can, can you maybe expand on that a little bit? Because Taking shelter of his lotus feet means following his instructions. That's how we do it. In the, that's how we do it. And also be what is that verse? Avismriti Krishna Padara Vindaya. Uh, what, how does that verse go? Avismriti Krishna Padara Vindaya. No, no, no. It's some, hmm? Who knows that? We should all learn these verses. If you, you're young, you've got a good brain, you can learn them. Look it up. Avis, hmm? Avismriti Krishna Padara Vindaya. Look it up, look it up. I can't hear what you're saying. Who is it? No, no, it's from... It's, no, no. No, no, no. Avi Smriti Krishna Padarvins from the 11th canto of Bhagavatam. No, 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 no. From the 11th canto of Bhagavatam. Chashang Sanoti, Sadvasya Shudhasya. How is it? You can learn the verse and then you can tell me next time I forget it. Because I have this propensity to learn verses and then forget them when I'm supposed to be reciting them. Look it up. Avi Smriti. Krishna Padara Vindaya. Or look up these words. Cha uh, Shang Tanoti. Sattvasya Shudhim Paramatma Bhaktim. Krishna Padara Vindaya. Shinoti Abhadrani Cha Shang Tanoti. Sattvasya Shudhim Paramatma Bhaktim. Gyanam Cha Vigyanam. Viraga Yuktam. So th the result of always, it's avismriti. It means, smriti gives the idea of remembering, vismriti means forgetting, so never forgetting. Never forgetting the lotus feet of Krishna destroys all inauspiciousness and brings in all auspiciousness. And situates us in, tr in transcendence, in devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And from that comes knowledge, realization, and automatic detachment from this world. So there is discussed. There's so many things we should learn. Yeah. Those of you who have young brains should, should learn all these verses. You were saying Mukunda Mala, every verse of Mukunda Mala, you learn that also. <laughs> so, I have one disciple actually, he's, he's uh, guess what, a South Indian Brahmin by background, and he's been a pujari in one temple for 25 years or something. And uh, he does all his service, in his spare time he learns shlokas. And he's, he's learned all the prayers in the body, thousands of shlokas. And he recites them when he's dressing the deities and everything. It must be a few thousand shlokas he's learned by now. So not everyone can do that, but it's 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 very helpful, isn't it? It's very pleasing, and it, it helps us in our bhakti. And if if you if you have a brain which is completely blown out by kali yoga, just chant Hare Krishna, and that's the essence of. Krishna mantra japa sada, a mantra sa. The essence of all mantras is the name of Krishna. Hmm. 
May I ask a question in relationship to your class this morning? Yeah. So you were discussing sulaba, the easily attained, but then I was thinking about um, the nectar of devotion and also the Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's mentioned that Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Chaitanya Charita Amrita. That the, uh, the, the Panchatattva, they distributed love of Godhead very uh, liberally and, and they inundated everyone with it. But then in the nectar of devotion, we see that pure devotional service is rarely achieved. So when you were speaking about Sulabha, I was just thinking of... Sulabha and Durlabha. Yeah, I was thinking of this... There's also a verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that the, now... With the advent of Lord Chaitanya, there's a great flow of nectar of love of Godhead. And those, and that's also in Chaitanya Charm Chandramata. Those who don't take advantage of this nectar, Paya Amrita, look that up. Paya, and look up, Amrita Dhuni. Amrita Dhuni. Yeah, D-H-U-N-I. You don't have to have a brain, you just have to have a, a device. Brain replacement. Paya Amrita Duni Jaina Shuni Gora Gona. How is it? I guess I could look it up myself. Uh, I don't know how to use it. Okay. What's the beginning of it? Paya Manusha Janma Jaina Shune Gora Gona. Heno Janma Ta Betta in Bengali from Betta Hoilo. Paya Amrita Duni Pia Bisha Gorita Pani Janmaya Shekene Neham Hoilo. So, uh, having attained the human form of life, if we just choose not to hear about the qualities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, jena shune gora guna, what, what's the use of there? Hmm? Jena shune. Yeah, their, their, their birth is completely useless and wasted. Having come to the banks of the river of nectar, if you choose to drink the water in the drain water, the sewage water, then why, what was the point of even being born in the first place? It's just a wasted life. So everyone has their individual choice. You can choose or not. You can choose to be Krishna conscious or not. The nectar is flowing, but we can avoid also. Yeah, please. You need the mic there? So, um, often we hear, like um, you mentioned about bless taking blessings, and devotees often ask... Yeah, that's why you came here. All the devotees can take blessings uh, from you. Yeah, right. But what I'm saying... Really? What I'm asking is, like... Um, you have to give all the answers now. Is... Um, like, what does that mean? Like, Mahotsava Prabhu, he always attributes his success to your mercy and your blessings. And, and I'm sure you give it, everyone can take advantage of it, but he takes full advantage of it. And what does that mean if, um, if somebody says, please bless me? Um, then how? you should bless them. And <laughs> so how do you bless? Like, what does that mean? Like, how are you extending? I plan to speak on this tomorrow, actually. Oh, okay. At the initiation or mm. uh, before mm. the initiation. Okay. So shall we wait? Because, <laughs> you know, it seems... Um, a address, <laughs> it's a kind Addressing of the quandary of what am I doing initiating. Just some no, miserable yeah. worm in stool that was picked up from the drain, and now I'm giving initiation. So what is going on? <laughs> I plan to speak on that tomorrow. You know, it sounds 
um, sometimes it's very lightly asked. You know, please yeah, give me blessings. Give me a blessing. Please Often blessings. I ask, what do you want blessings for? And I say, well, uh, <laughs> my children pass their exams. And and often they, you know, people come in, in India. Always people say, so "What do you want?" Blessing? And they didn't really think about it. They say, "Well, so I can be a pure devotee." And so, are you, are you prepared to do the work? It's not just I'm going to touch you and you're going to get an electric shock. Are you prepared to do the work? Do you really want to be a pure devotee? Do you really want to give up all your material attachments? Throw it. You can throw it back at them. Also, if people are asking in a superficial way. Blessings are there, do we really want them? Like Srila Prabhupada on a train from Madras to Nello, and some people came in his apartment and said, we want your ashivad, your blessing. Srila Prabhupada, saffron cloth, this is my blessing. In other words, you should become renounced like me. And they just slowly moved out. <laughs> <laughs> if I, what do you probably what are your blessings for? He said, Well for you know, good health and family happiness and they could see probably and they just can they talk just kind of drained away and probably said, This is my blessing. <laughs> and they moved they just moved <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> moved away. They could have taken. They could have taken. They didn't want to. There are so many instances. Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj, the Maharaj Nandi. Yeah, yeah, he's a king, a very rich man, very pious man. Sponsored so many Vaishnavas. He came to Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj and, and, uh, Begged him again and again, please come, please come to my house, to my palace, bless my home. And Gorkishore said, you know, if, if I go there, you won't be happy because I'll desire all your wealth and opulence. I'll become a competitor to you. <laughs> and he said, no, 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 please come. I'll make all arrangements so you can go comfortably. We just want to get your association. So Gorkishore said, well, if you want my association, you don't have to go back. I'm here. You can, you can leave all that behind and live like me and live with me. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Ante Narayana Smriti Hi. Please bless us all. Mother Kamalini. Distributed, distributed so many books throughout your life, still going on enthusiastically. You all want blessings? Go, and go to her, touch her lotus feet and ask her to sell some books to you. She'll be happy. No, you should listen to what I say. <laughs> I'm pulling rank on you. Vancha kalpa tarubhyas cha kripa sindhu bhya eva cha padita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha dante nitai chana kang padayana pachaka